thank you so much for joining us here at Chirp for our virtual bird walk. As you can see, based off these pictures, that we've had many bird walks in the past for over a year now, but due to the current circumstances, we started doing virtual bird walks. Fortunately, we are now able to host both. We will be having in-person bird walks at the first of every month. And this event that you're attending right now is our virtual bird walks. And the reason that we've continued these is because we want you to be able to connect with nature regardless of where you are. So thank you so much for joining. If you are in the Big Bear area, our next in-person bird walk is Saturday, August 1st. So keep that in mind. But for a few birdhouse rules before we get started, you are able to ask questions. So if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see a little Q&A box. This is if you're in the Zoom format, and we will try to answer these questions throughout the presentation. So please enjoy these next 45 minutes, but make sure you pay attention because at the very end, you are able to take a little bird walk quiz and be entered to win in a grand prize. So make sure that you're part of this program the whole time. So let me take this time now to start our bird walk and introduce you to our spotter. Because we aren't able to gather all together, we do have a special spotter in the field and some of you may know who it is. His name is Randall Putz and he is the owner of Chirp Nature Center. You can see this picture with him and his beautiful wife, Beth. He also is a nature enthusiast. One of the reasons he created Chirp Nature Center was to connect people to nature using birds as inspiration. And speaking of birds, he loves bluebirds. Actually, the icon for Chirp is a bluebird. So now you know every time you see our symbol, what type of bird you're looking at. All right, Randy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tori. I'm so glad you and others could join us this day. I'm here out in front of Chirp Nature Center in beautiful Big Bear Lake. We are going to go off on a bird walk into the National Forest. We're going to head from here south to an area called Knickerbocker Canyon and Knickerbocker Meadow. We'll talk more about that as we go along. So as Randy mentioned, we will be in the Knickerbocker Canyon and Meadow area. This is off of Knickerbocker Road. If you look at the map on the right hand side, you'll see the small chirp for chirp icon and this little location marker is where the Knickerbocker Meadow is. It is up Forest Road 2 and 08. So it's about a 40 minute walk from Chirp Nature Center but let me tell you it is worth every step. All right Randy now that we know where we're going what is next? All right Tori we're all ready we're gonna head off into the forest. And we'll keep the cameras rolling as Randy begins to walk but as you can see it is an easy there's easy access to this road based on chirp nature center you just hang a left and you actually pass by my old elementary school big bear elementary school which you'll see on the left hand side and where my dad taught me fifth grade so randy i have a question for you why is it named knickerbocker road tori as we walk up knickerbocker you'll see behind me the knickerbocker mansion named after Big Bear Lake's first dam keeper. And when Big Bear Lake was first formed, the dam was the largest man-made wonder in the world. I thought this was a fantastic fact. It's true that the first Big Bear Dam was built in 1884, creating the Big Bear Lake. And at that time, Big Bear Lake was the largest man-made lake in the world. As for Knickerbocker Mansion, it was built in the 1920s by Bill Knickerbocker, Big Bear's own Paul Bunyan, and it is still the largest vertical log cabin west of the Mississippi. So it looks like Randy's made it to the trailhead. Let's go ahead and catch up with him. We're at the intersection of Knickerbocker Road and Forest Service Road 2108, which is one of the entrances to the South Shore Road and Trail Network in the National Forest here in Big Bear Lake. If you come up here on your own, this is a good place to drive to and park. You will need an adventure pass, which can be purchased at a variety of locations around the Big Bear Valley, including Chirp Nature Center. Good to know. This is quite a gorgeous area you can see, and it looks like Randy has one more tip for us before we begin. We're about to get started on our bird walk, but before we do, there's a few things I want to make sure we always have with us when we go on a bird walk that just make it more pleasant and easier. First thing, 
pair of binoculars. These are a lovely pair of German engineered Zeiss binoculars. A bird guide. This is our favorite at Chirp. It's the Peterson's Guide to Birds of North America, Western edition. Comes in Eastern edition as well. And a checklist for the area that you're in. This is Chirp's checklist for birds of the Big Bear Valley. It's available online. Also, you can pick up a free hard copy at the shop as well. Those are some great tips for any bird walk that we go on. So starting today, as we walk, are you hearing any specific sounds? I'm hearing a chip, chip, chip sound. And at first you're tempted to think that that's a bird. Turns out it's not. It is a chipmunk. Think of the chipmunks in the Disney films with the stripes down their back. Here we will also have ground squirrels and gray squirrels. Gray squirrels have the big bushy tails. You'll often see them in trees. They love to raid bird feeders. And the ground squirrel you'll see typically on the ground and lacks the bushy tail. Thank you so much for that, Randy. As we see this beautiful area, whether we're seeing birds or ground squirrels, I'm so grateful that we can be here with you today. Oh, it looks like Randy has his binoculars out. So what are you seeing up there? A juvenile acorn woodpecker. Earlier this morning at my feeder, I saw a mother taking some suet and feeding it to another juvenile. It's pretty cool to watch that. Great that Randy was able to see both a juvenile and a mother, which is what is featured in this video on the right hand side. Interestingly enough, acorn woodpeckers have very committed family dynamics. Their family groups hold territories and young, young woodpeckers will stay with their families for several years to help raise the young. They also create granary trees. And this is a single tree that holds up to 50,000 different holes. Again, as you can see on the right-hand side, one of these trees is covered with holes, which will be filled with acorns in autumn. And these acorns is not what the acorn woodpecker eat. They actually wait for it to ferment and then eat the insects that are attracted to the acorns. Very impressive. They have a very short chatter. If you want to listen in. What other birds can we find in this area? As we climb up into the forest and we're noticing some of the bark foragers like the sap suckers and the woodpeckers, we're also keeping our eyes open for a bird called a brown creeper. It's a small bird and it will climb up the trunk of trees in spirals using its tail to stabilize itself. And it is a very efficient bird. It burns something like 14 kilocalories, 14 calories in a day compared to a human's 2000 calories. And a single spider will fuel it to climb 200 feet up a tree. This very efficient this is bird hard. is also very Camouflage. So as you can see on the right hand side, it blends easily into bark as it hitches onto the sides of trees looking for insects. Now it's called a bark forager, meaning that it looks for its food on the bark of trees. Their hammock, their nests are hammock-like and they're usually built behind loosened flaps of bark or on a dead tree. And there's a very shrill song that was recorded as it jumped between Jeffrey Pines. So there's a few seconds between each of the sounds. So make sure you take it listen. We are getting more and more of an incredible view. What are you seeing now, Randy? We're continuing to climb up Forest Service Road 2 and 08. You can see 
our views get better and better as we climb higher. We're at roughly 7,000 feet altitude right now. And if you're able to see, we're looking out over Big Bear Lake. There's the solar observatory in the distance, which at the current time is the largest solar observatory in the world. It may have already, or it will soon uh, be relegated to the second largest uh, because there's another larger solar observatory being built elsewhere. No wonder you sound a bit winded as you're climbing, Randy. This hike is actually 700 foot elevation gain, but again, worth every step as you're seeing by these views. What other birds are you looking for as we climb? Another bird that we'll see in this area, also a cavity nester, is a violet green swallow, which gets its name from its violet, purple, and uh, greenish markings, a beautiful bird. It is an aerial forager, which means that it plucks insects out of mid-air, and we'll often find them closer to the water. Uh, if we were on the north shore of the lake over by the Discovery Center, I've been over there recently, and I've seen a ton of them, especially in the evening, flying around feeding on insects. They are impressively fast flyers. They can fly as fast as 25-ish miles an hour, which is impressive when a peregrine falcon's traveling speed is about the same. These birds are very impressive and very beautiful. You can notice the distinct white wrapping that goes all the way from the breast of the bird up and around the eye. Females are not as colorful on the back, but they all have that signature white wrapping. As Randy mentioned, they are aerial foragers, which means they do impressive aerial stunts as they dive through the air in order to catch their insect prey mid-air. Very impressive. You can also hear them make very shrill cheeps. As you can see, the view just keeps getting better and better. Where are we now, Randy? We're looking out here over Knickerbocker Canyon. We're going to continue up a ways to the meadow that is in the canyon. But while we're walking, we're also continuing to look high and low. We're looking up in the trees for birds that might be foraging among the branches. We're looking down at the ground for birds that might be foraging on the ground for insects and seeds. And those are important clues when we're trying to identify the birds as to where we find them in our environment. Again, as we scan in this area, you can see all the mountains and the Big Bear Lake in the background. So thank you for those tips, Randy. And as you continue to look around, what else are you noticing? Another cavity nester that we'll see in this area is a unassuming brown bird called a house wren. But don't let its meek presence fool you. It is actually a very aggressive competitor for nest holes. And it is known to fight and even kill larger birds. And it will go into existing nest holes and it will pull out any existing eggs or young to make room for its own. The house wren is a foliage gleaner, which means it hops around plants and trees looking for insects to eat. Now this little bird is aggressive, but it also is very small. It weighs about 10 to 12 grams on average, which is as much as two quarters. So next time you're holding two quarters in your hand, you're pretty much holding a house wren. It is also one of the largest ranges of any songbird in the New World. So it breeds from Canada through the West Indies and Central America, southward and to the southernmost most point of South America. So if you are in any of those locations, you have a good chance of seeing one. It also houses in trees and nest boxes, which you can either purchase nest boxes or you can build your own. And Maybe you can house a house wren. 
They have a very harsh chatter sound. Go, sound. Go ahead and take a listen. It feels like we've been hiking for a while. So how close are we to the Knickerbocker Meadow? We have come up Knickerbocker Road from Chirp Nature Center, turned on to Forest Service Road 2108. We've come up here a ways, and now we're about to turn off onto a trail that's going to take us to Knickerbocker Meadow. It's easy to tell where this turn off is because it's a hairpin turn, it's next to a canyon, and there are marker rocks right here. So we're going to head off here into the meadow. Another gorgeous area. And as we drop down into the meadow, what other birds do you anticipate seeing? Another bird that we've seen in this area is a scrub jay. Not very common, certainly not as common as its relative, the Stellar's jay, uh, but it has a scratchy nasally voice it does not have the black crest like the Stellar's Jay. It's blue and gray. You'll see them a lot uh, down in lower elevations in Southern California. And they are omnivores and they will eat insects and nuts. You'll find them at feeders often. And their beaks are especially powerful and engineered to open up acorns. Now these royal blue beauties also have a very grayish back, as you can see in this video in the right hand corner. There's blue all throughout their head, and then there's that gray kind of stripe along the back. They also have a very distinct flight pattern. So if you're trying to identify them, look for scrub jays who fly with a series of quick wing beats, followed by a very stiff glide. And if you can't see them, you can always hear them. They have a very nasal call, and this is a recording of a scrub jay in response to some other scrub jays just like probably fight over some peanuts. As we drop down into the meadow, how is this area changing? We're continuing to head up Knickerbocker Canyon and we are by a little stream. You can hear it gurgling. Very, very pleasant, very lovely sound. There are birds going off all around us and uh, there's a fair amount of bugs or insects, which is encouraging because the birds, of course, feed on them. Watching this footage, having a water source is very essential in any bird walk you take because as Randy mentioned, water attracts the bugs, the bugs attract the birds. So it's all kind of a circle of life pattern. I'm also noticing a very diverse plant and tree life in this area. What are some of the different ones that you're seeing? So in this area of Knickerbocker Canyon, we'll see a variety of trees in part because of the water. We'll have pine trees, we'll have oak trees, we'll have cedar trees, we'll have some willow trees, all different kinds of trees. And I can tell that this right here is a Jeffrey pine, in part because the cone has spikes that turn inward, and that's why they'll call it a gentle Jeffrey, because the spikes aren't pointing out and hurting your hand when you hold it. And the other way I can tell, Smells like vanilla. I wish I could smell that with you right now. I have never ceased to be amazed by nature and all of its little quirks, I guess you could say. This is just some footage of these beautiful, beautiful giants that are in this area. Again, just a majestic example of the beauty in this area and also how they can be used to house some birds. So speaking of these beautiful trees, Randy, what are you seeing up there? Just saw 
a red-breasted sapsucker. Beautiful bird, the bright red head, red chest, white sash, and mostly uh, black on its back. They are cavity nesters, and they are distinct in that they uh, are insectivores, but they will drill holes into trees looking for sap. And what's interesting about that is hummingbirds will use their feeding holes as well to feed on the sap. Very cool. It is interesting that hummingbirds will kind of get away with just using the feeder holes of the sap suckers. But these beautiful birds are medium size. They weigh about 1.9 ounces, which is the same as two loaves of two slices of bread. So next time you're making breakfast and you're holding two slices of bread, you have a red breasted sap sucker in your hand. The difference between a sap sucker and a woodpecker is that sap suckers will drill holes into bark in order to access the sap, whereas woodpeckers will drill into the bark in order to get insects in that area. So a little bit of a distinction there. Again, these red breasted sap suckers are bark foragers, meaning that they will look, they will utilize bark in order to get to their food. They also have a very screeching call. Can you tell us more about the Knickerbocker Meadow now that we've arrived? You can see the meadow is beginning to open up for us as we continue up Knickerbocker Canyon. And it is uh, spring fed, so there is always a water source here, typically year round, unless it's an especially dry year. And of course, this water attracts the bugs and the birds that we're interested in. And what I especially like about this area, because we're in a canyon, it's just an amphitheater of sights and sounds. Well said, Randy. In this amphitheater of sounds, what else are you hearing? I'm hearing a distinctive sound. I believe it's that of a green-tailed towhee. It is a ground forager, an insect eater. It tends to be in dense shrubs, and it has a distinct behavior that if it's approached by predators, it will run away from its nest with its tail raised, mimicking that of a chipmunk so that it can draw the predator away. So although this bird is part of the sparrow family, it does have a very distinct behavior and very distinct marking you can see the video on the right hand side. It has this greenish stripe and alongside the tail and the wings and then kind of a reddish brown top. It is also a ground forager, so it rarely visits feeders, but is still in the area of Knickerbocker Meadow. And Randy, it sounds like the mic caught, picked up more than one bird sound. So we'll go ahead and just single out the shrill song of a green tailed turkey. Beautiful. Are you seeing any other birds in the meadow? You will also see in this area a lazuli bunting, which the male is very bright blue with orange. The female, sorry ladies, kind of a drab brown. And they will sing their songs from the top of uh, shrubs uh, during nesting season. Uh, they can be very loud. Uh, they eat insects, they eat uh, seeds, you will sometimes see them at feeders. But something remarkable about the lazuli bunting is that they form song neighborhoods where groups or families of buntings will all develop similar songs, in part, they theorize, so that they can recognize one another. This beautiful bird has a blue top and white wing bars. So that's how you're able to distinguish it from other birds that are potentially blue. They also will visit Niger feeders. So keep that in mind towards the end of the quiz if you wanna see any more lazuli buntings in your backyard. They also are a foliage gleaner like the house wren. They will hunt for insects on the ground, rock faces, and even off the backs of animals. Thought that was kind of cool. They have a very bright sound. And again, these this audio bit is recorded, so be patient and you'll be able to hear it twice.
Wonderful. And now that we have reached the meadow, how can we enhance our birding experience? I'm in front of this big, huge, beautiful cedar tree. And we've pretty much gotten to the meadow area. A lot of water, a lot of uh, green, a lot of water plants. And one thing to consider when you're in an area like this is to find what they call a sit spot. And to just go somewhere and sit and be quiet and listen and observe what unfolds around you. And you'll find that relative to the birds and animals, if you're quiet and still for long enough, you'll start to sort of fade into the background and your senses will awaken and you will start noticing more and more things. There's a whole book about this concept called What the Robin Knows. We have it at Chirp Nature Center and it goes into uh, detail about how you find and develop a sit spot and really awaken your senses and your connection to nature. As you can say, this is the perfect area to just take in nature and all the beauty that is around. And again, with more footage of these trees, with the meadow in the background, you really can't go wrong just taking a moment to sit and listen, and it looks like Randy has found his own area to rest. I've found a sit spot, I'm taking a moment just to sit and be quiet and relax. And I notice some plants off behind me that might attract hummingbirds. And normally up here, we have the Anna's hummingbirds. That's the predominant species of hummingbird. But there's also a calliope hummingbird that we might see up here uh, in this area. They've been seen here before. And they are very small. They're about the weight of a ping pong ball. And they are very aggressive. They've been known to fight off red tail hawks from their nests, which is amazing if you think about something that's that small, taking on a big hawk. And they are also the longest, smallest migrants in that they will migrate 5,000 miles. Now these beautiful hummingbirds, as you can see, frequent feeders. And if you notice, they have that very distinct magenta throat in kind of a striped pattern. They also not only have an incredibly long migration pattern, but they are the smallest bird in the United States. They're about as long as three inches, which if you put together three paper clips, is the same length. So imagine a three inch bird flying 5,000 miles in order to migrate. They're pretty incredible birds. Dare I say awesome. And if you have any more interest in learning about hummingbirds, Chirp Nature Center actually gave a bird talk about amazing hummingbirds. And you can watch that video on our YouTube channel, Chirp Nature Center. Let's go ahead and look for that bird talk. One thing I do love about hummingbirds is they have a very tweety, soft sound. It's kind of fluttery if you listen to it. Well, we have seen quite a variety of birds on this walk today. And I, for one, am grateful that I've had a comfy sit spot this entire time. So thank you, Randy, for doing all the hard work for us. We're about to head off, and what's your next plan? We're going to finish up for today, and we're going to head back to the shop. And I want to thank everybody for joining us, for taking a moment out of their day to enjoy this beautiful, beautiful area and discover some birds with us. And I hope you'll join us again next time. Well, we're so grateful to have you, Randy. And now that the presentation has ended, it is your turn as the audience to test your bird brain. You can take the bird walk quiz to claim your prize. All you have to do is go to chirperbirds.com slash birdwalk backslash, and you can be entered in to win a free Niger feeder. As you remember, the Lazuli bunting will constantly visit the Niger feeder along with many other types of birds. So don't miss your opportunity to be entered in the drawing to win this beautiful feeder. And after taking the prize, regardless of whether you win or not, you will be receiving a Chirp Love sticker. 
because we would just like to say here at Chirp Nature Center, thank you so much for joining us on our virtual event. But you better hurry. The quiz is only open for 24 hours. So after the event is done, you will be the link to the quiz will be posted on our website. It will also be on all of the chat formats, YouTube, Facebook, and in this webinar so that you're able to get access to that right away. Until we see you next, we I'd just like to remind you of our upcoming virtual events. So we have three virtual events now occurring each month. We have our virtual bird talk, which is the next one is coming up on the 18th of July and it's all about children, nature and birding. So some advice of how to get your kids engaged in nature and in birding. The virtual bird talks happen the third Saturday of every month. And the How To Series, which is a new series that's coming out with Chirp Nature Center, will be on the fourth Wednesday of every month. So this series is about how to create backyard, of the best backyard birding experience. We've been getting a lot of feedback from people who are curious on how to create a bird-friendly backyard, how to find perfect feeders, so make sure that you tune into these events on the fourth Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. in order to get some insight information on how to have a great birding backyard experience. We also have our virtual bird walks, which you are currently attending. They happen the second Wednesday of every month. And we also have our live bird walks, which are the first Saturday of every month. I know this is a lot of information, so you can always go to chirpforbirds.com and you will be able to see all of our activities and upcoming events so that you never miss any of the important and fun information that we want to share with you. Until we see you again, let us know how we can help. We are located in Big Bear Lake, California, and you can call us at any time. We're open from 10 to 6, and you're welcome to email us as well. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. You can also follow us on our social media threads, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So you don't have to miss out on any of the great activities we have prepared for you. So again, thank you so much for joining us here today. Now go ahead and test your bird brain at chirpforbirds.com slash birdwalkquiz, and we will see you next time.